Good morning everyone, this is Jeannie and welcome back to my channel. It's really early in the morning and I just wanted to talk for a few minutes <clears throat> and share with you something that I've been doing lately. Um, my mother passed away two years ago and it's really, really hard when you lose your mom or anybody who you love in your life. Uh, in the 90s, in the 1990s, she began writing a book about her life. And I was only ever able to walk, read portions of it. I was never really able, I don't know why, I wasn't able to read all of it. Well, this week I began reading her book. <coughs> And let me show you how big it is. Whoops, I'm sorry. Oh, I just lost my place. This is her book. <clears throat> and it's, I can find where I left off. It's typewritten. Just page by page, one page. Uh, with one of those really old fashioned printers make noise. I don't even know what it's called. But I started reading her book and she begins in the 1920s when she was born. And what I love about this book is not only is it historical as far as what was going on in 1927 when she was born historically, what was going on with America at that time, how it affected her family in New England during the Depression. Uh, it also has a, the lineage, the whole family background, you know, our ancestors and uh, what they were doing even before she was born. It is so complete and so concise. And then she talks about how she was born and her family my ancestors uh, and how she met my father. It was such a romantic story and uh, he was a Marine in World War II and it was so romantic the way they dated and courted and got married and then began their family and their life in New England and uh, it was just that love story and their passion intermingled with the history of what was going on in America, in the United States, and then the World Wars, the World War I, World War II, and how it affected our family. Uh, I just, I wish I had read it. I really wish I had read it when she was alive because I have so many questions, but I don't know why I couldn't read it. So I've been reading this book and I feel so close to my mother since I've been reading it. And in the end, she wrote me a letter after she gave it to me. And this was in, dated September 1st, 1992. So it's really been interesting reading this book. I could never write a book this detailed about my life. I mean, I, when I look back at how my mother was, I could never, I could never be the way she was. She was a nurse that uh, studied at Massachusetts General Hospital where in the same room where they invented the artificial eye, uh, famous surgeons, doctors, um, inventors worked at Massachusetts General. So I've always been proud of the fact that my mother got her education at that prestigious college. They've stopped the classes, I, I don't know when, maybe the 80s, I can't remember, but they stopped having nurses training there at that hospital for some reason. But anyhow, it was so interesting. It's also compelling, it's sad. It's, uh, 
I'm just, it's like I'm in my own world with my mother when I read it. So I just wanted to share that with you. I wish I could leave something like this for my children about me, but my life is just not like hers at all. Anyhow, I did do, now I'm not bragging, this is nothing, but I just wanted to share with you what I did do. And I think it was, in, I don't know when I did it, because I have a date on here. This is a CD, and that is the scariest picture. I don't know why I chose this picture, but that is the CD that I wrote, oh, didn't read. Mm -hmm. What it is, is uh, just some scriptures and songs that I read set to my own music, and I own the copyright of this music. Uh, and the reason I did this CD was because I had, for some reason, I recorded on those little cassettes psalms that missionaries used to take to foreign lands and they would turn them on and their children would fall asleep. Um, some of these missionaries who I gave my tapes to were in kind of dangerous situations and it would calm the children down. I don't know who they were. I don't remember. It was so long ago. Uh, and I don't even know what countries they took my CDs, my tapes to. But later I was asked to do a CD format when that became popular. So I did. I put it on CDs. And um, I don't have that many left, but what I'd like to do is not sell them, but give them away if I can figure out how to make copies of them. Um, my voice on it is very, very quiet on purpose because it's meant to be soothing. The music is very quiet and slow. Um, for a reason. Uh, it's just made that way. It's how my voice is. I apologize to all of you who have let me know that you can't hear me. Well, there's a reason for that too. <laughs> it's a medical reason, but I won't go into that. Uh, but it's been something that I've had to battle with my entire life. So getting criticized on YouTube isn't new. I don't care. You know, I, I do my best. I know I, I saw some mics this big at Best Buy, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to get and just stick my head in it practically to talk. But um, anyhow, I just wanted to share this with you. This is my legacy to my children. Um, and I would like to give them away to different people, friends. So anyhow, I just wanted to share with you what I've been doing this week, reading my mother's book. She never wanted it published, so it will never be published. Uh, and it's called Golden Days, <clears throat> based on a song that she and my father uh, loved that was in a musical. And they went to a lot of plays and musicals and shows in Boston, or where they live, where I grew up. and. A good memory. I'll just share that with you. My legacy from my mother. So you guys have a great day. It was so good to talk to you. And I'll see you in my next video.